Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and today, in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share the story of an amazing woman named Mary Blair. In the story, Mary Blair's Unique Flair, we get to hear the story of Mary Blair, and this story was written in 2019 by Amy Novesky and illustrated by Brittany Lee, and it's a fabulous story that I can't wait to share with you. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Mary Blair's Unique Flair. Mary Brown Robinson loved color. Even her name had a color in it. All she wanted was to paint. But her family didn't have money for such things. Still, sometimes they went with less to eat so Mary could buy paper and jars of color. So from a very early age, Mary Blair loved colors and drawing, and her family really supported her in that. Mary, Mary was born into an artistic home. Her mother sewed clothing for a living, her father had the most beautiful handwriting, and he was a dreamer. He dreamed of traveling. Mary was a dreamer, too. She dreamed of being an artist. So both of her parents were artistic. And in turn, Mary dreamed of being an artist herself. <clears throat> when the family moved from Texas to California, Mary carried her sketchbook and her suitcase full of paints all the way to the Golden State. She loved to travel just like her father. So even though they moved across country, Mary still took all of her paints in her little suitcase and her sketch pad. And she learned that she loved to travel as well and see the sights. At school, Mary covered her textbooks with drawings. She entered contests and earned a spot at school for the arts. She later married another artist named Lee and became Mary Blair. They vowed to make art, but it was hard to make a living as an artist. So when she was a teenager, she drew. She got accepted to art school. She met and married another artist and became Mary Blair. But she couldn't make a lot of money doing art, is what she, had, she and her husband had found. <clears throat> so Mary took a job with the Walt Disney Studios. There, she painted a dog named Lady. And the big emotions and ears of a little elephant named Dumbo, alongside other artists. So Mary figured out a way to earn money as an artist, she started working for Walt Disney and got to paint Lady from Lady and the Tramp and a special little elephant named Dumbo. <clears throat> Despite how fun it was to work at Disney, it wasn't Mary's dream come true yet. So she quit. She preferred to stay home and paint. But when Mary heard that Walt was taking artists, including Lee, on a trip to South America, she asked Mr. Disney to take her along. <clears throat> so initially she said, I'd rather stay at home and paint by myself and paint what I want. So she quit Disney until she heard uh, from her husband that Walt Disney was taking people on a trip to South America. So she called Mr. Disney and said, please take me. Mary grabbed her suitcase full of paints and she flew from Burbank to Brazil, to Argentina, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru. Mary had never seen such bright and happy colors before. Verde and azul, amarelo, amarillo, laranja, anaranjado, vermelo, rojo, and rosa, lilas, lavanda, Ro rojo, morado, marron, marron, cinza, gris, preto, negro, 
These are the names of many colors in other languages. Some are in Spanish, some might be in Portuguese. But she'd never seen such amazing colors. <clears throat> and her favorite color, blanco, the color of a blank piece of paper, of possibility. She immersed herself in the colors and the cultures and she painted them all. She especially loved painting the children she met. It was a small world after all. So she loved all of the things that she was seeing and being able to paint, but she loved painting the children. And I think the book just gave us a hint to what she ends up doing. <clears throat> then with her suitcase full, Mary went back to work for Walt. And this time it was a dream come true. She painted and painted. She painted colors you weren't supposed to paint together. Golden yellow, ochre, jade green and royal purple, hot pink and red rose matter. She painted an iris sky, an emerald world, a fuchsia sea, a turquoise moon. So after returning from her trip, her dream did become a dream come true, and she painted things that had never been painted before in colors that they'd never been painted in before. <clears throat> Walt was a dreamer too, just like Mary. He dreamed of making feature-length films painted entirely by hand. Nobody believed it could be done. But Walt, Walt believed in magic and he believed in Mary. So it seems like many times dreamers encounter other dreamers and they stick together. Walt dreamed of movies, Mary dreamed of painting. <clears throat> so Mary painted concept art for three of Disney's most beloved animated films, Cinderella, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, Alice in Wonderland. Oh no, she's falling. And Peter Pan. Then Walt asked her, one of his favorite artists, to create art for a brand new attraction at Disneyland. For Mary, this was the biggest and best project ever. So imagine what this could be. She's already worked on Cinderella and Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. But this next project is the best one yet. It's a Small World was to feature kids from all over the world to celebrate unity, goodwill, and global peace. For inspiration, all Mary had to do was open her suitcase full of paints. So all those children she painted when she was in South America are the same thing she's using for inspiration for this ride at Disneyland. <clears throat> to create colorful, happily ever afters. The end. And ladies and gentlemen, here's a, a picture from the... the of Mary Blair, a picture of Brittany Lee, who drew the pictures for this story. I'm sorry, this is a picture of, um, oh, it is of Mary Blair. And there's another one of her with Walt Disney. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a dreamer and you enjoyed the story Mary Blair's Unique Flair, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. Again, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Howie family for loaning me an amazing collection of books that I get to share with you, my YouTube watchers. 
I appreciate you all. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.